The more I learn about Ohio, the more weirded out I am. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 disturbing historical facts from Ohio that you were never taught in school. Coming in at number 10 is the melon heads. It's said if you drive through Lake County, Ohio late at night and happen to see something that resembles a pack of people with huge heads staring at you from the tall grass, you may have stumbled across the melon heads of Ohio. Ohio. Allegedly, the government ran a number of experiments, which eventually left a group of humans with heads swell to enormous sizes. Now, obviously, the government found little to do with these now deformed people, so the story goes that they got dumped off in the woods near Kirtland, Ohio, not far from Cleveland. But because every story gets retold, more paranormal theories have been proposed about the melon heads. Some believe them to be the ghosts of young subjects who burned to death in a cabin fire. Now, it's said that they were subjected to tests by a man named Dr. Crow, whose work caused their heads to inflate to their larger size. Now, regardless of their origins, the melon heads get sighted most at Windsor Road, where many high schoolers go and attempt to witness them firsthand. Now, to me, that sounds absolutely terrifying, and if I ever go to Ohio, I will be avoiding that area completely. Number nine. Helltown. With a name like Helltown, it's no shock that this town had terrible things happen. Founded in 1806, Boston Village's original claim to fame was its standing as the oldest village in Summit County. But in 1974, it became the unlucky victim of nationwide anxiety over the county's disappearing forest land. The land was then given to the National Park Services and they decided it would be home to a new park. The government began buying the properties of its longtime residents and then, of course, the government quickly fell behind on its plan to create the park and the village sat neglected. Now the hellish aura of the area only continued to grow when they also acquired the Kredgy Dump in 1985. Rangers visiting the site became ill and covered in rashes. It was soon discovered that the dump was highly polluted with toxic chemicals improperly disposed of. Also in the village there is a church which is said to have been built by Satanists complete with upside down crosses. There's an abandoned bus that is said to be the host of lingering ghosts and there is a talk of mutants who were created by the chemical spill, including the monstrous snake known as the Peninsula Python. Number 8. The Butcher of Kingsbury Run The Butcher of Kingsbury Run was an identified serial slayer who was active in Cleveland, Ohio in the 1930s. The deaths are characterized by the dismemberment of 13 known victims and the disposal of their remains in the impoverished neighborhood of Kingsbury Run. Now, Most victims came from an area east of Kingsbury Run called the Roaring Third or Hobo Jungle known for its bars, gambling, dens, brothels, and vagrants. Now, Many of the victims remain unidentified to this day, and despite an investigation of the deaths, which at one time was led by famed lawman Elliot Ness, then Cleveland's public safety director, the criminal responsible was never apprehended. Now, Recent speculation suggests that the butcher may have traveled west and was also responsible for the death of Elizabeth Short of the Black Dahlia murder case. Number 7. The Circleville Letter Writer In the 1970s, residents of a small town of Circleville and Pickaway County started receiving personal, mysterious letters about their lives. Now, the letters were written in block style and contained vindictive, violent, and often vulgar material. School bus driver Mary Glipsy became the main target of the letters. The writer accused Mary, who was married, to having an affair with a married school superintendent, Gordon Massey. Now, the letters sent to Mary didn't stop and they became increasingly threatening. Her husband, Ronald Glipsy, began receiving them too. Then, in August 1977, Ronald died and it was unknown whether the death was accidental or a homicide, but it was believed the letters were related to his death. The letters continued even after a suspect was placed in prison, and the letters continued to arrive in residences' mailboxes, both city officials and average citizens alike, until the late 90s. The writer was never revealed, and it remains an Ohio mystery to this day. Number 6. The Legend of Elizabeth's Grave This infamous legend starts at Mount Union Pleasant Valley Cemetery, one of the most haunted cemeteries in Ohio. The rural cemetery is home to the chilling Elizabeth's grave. Now there are two major stories to Elizabeth's legend. In the first, Elizabeth, overcome with grief over the death of her husband, hanged herself from a tree near the rear of the cemetery in which her husband was buried. In another variation, Elizabeth had her life ended in a similar manner by several men angry over her inheritance upon her husband's death. Now in both legends, the story goes that Elizabeth was buried near the front of the cemetery. However, her 
tombstone mysteriously moves itself to the back of the cemetery near the location of her death, most often against the very tree from which she hung. When replaced, it would always wander back to the rear of the cemetery. Now that's not all, it's rumored that Elizabeth still walks the cemetery, often seen in a white dress. A few people claim that apparitions of Elizabeth are accompanied by the apparitions of two shadowy men dressed in all black. Sometimes she's seen hanging from the tree where she lost her life, and some even say that on the anniversary of her death, blood drips from the tree in question. Number 5. Eugene the Mummy An African American man in his mid to late 40s was found dead from natural charges on a road near Sabina in Ohio. He was alone and without identification, believed to be a wanderer in search of a job. Townspeople claim to have seen him walking in town the day before, appearing to be ill. The only things in his pocket were $1.40 and a slip of paper with the address 1118 Yale Avenue, Cincinnati. Upon investigation, authorities arrived at the address only to find a vacant lot. The identity of the man was still a complete mystery, so they decided that the name of a nearby neighbor, Eugene, would work for the time being, at least until they figured out who he was. This man, now named Eugene, was brought to Sabina's Littleton funeral home and embalmed. They then set the mummified man in a brick shed near a bus stop so that people could come by and identify the body. Now the typical 30 day period of viewing passed with no luck, but pretty soon though, Eugene became a permanent resident of Sabina. He just sat there on the side of the road for years. Now the town loved what they called their town mascot, and Eugene had a couch to rest on, was dusted and cleaned, and his clothes were changed when they got dingy. Over a period of 35 years, it is estimated that Sabina's mummy man was viewed by 1.5 million people, but he's still never been identified. Now I'm sorry, I can't believe they were able to do that, that is sick. Number 4. Moonville Tunnel Located deep in the woods, the Moonville Tunnel is framed by faded stone archways covered in moss. Now the tunnel itself is long and extremely dark, and it's actually an out of work stretch of railroad track that leads to an old cold mining town, and of course, it's haunted. Now, the most infamous Moonville ghost story originated in 1880 when engineer Theodore Lawhead was driving a train down the dark, desolate tracks from Cincinnati to Moretta when another train unexpectedly collided with his. This was apparently a train dispatcher's mistake, and Theodore and a fireman died instantly. As early as 1895, ghost stories about a figure thought to be Theodore holding a bright white lantern with a flowing white beard, eyes that glistened like balls of fire, and a halo of twinkling stars would appear and just as quickly disappear. In addition to the engineer, Moonville is supposedly haunted by a railway brakeman who looms in the tunnel, a woman who smells like lavender, and a bully named Baldy Keaton who has been known to throw rocks and tease people. Number 3. Beaver Creek State Park This park is special because of its history of being a canal system in the 1800s with locks that still remain in the park. One of them, called Jake's Lock, is said to be haunted by Jake, a canal worker who was struck by lightning while walking walking across the top. Many other legends exist within the park, including the tale of Esther Hale, known as the Bride of the Bridge. On the morning of her wedding, someone was sent to check on the groom to find that his house was empty and he was never seen again. Esther, grieving for months, wondering what happened to her soon-to-be husband, was then found dead in her home. According to the book Haunted Ohio II, it's said by the locals that you can still see her dressed in white, looking for her bridegroom on the bridge over Beaver Creek. She waits there every year on August 12th, a hideous figure in tattered white satin and lace, and if she touches you, she will become young and beautiful again, but you will die. Number 2. Malabar Farm Malabar Farm was built in 1939 by Pulitzer Prize winning author Louis Broomfield, and it was his home until his death in 1956. But before it was built, another family lived there in the 19th century. Celia Rose, who lived there, was said to be half child and half woman, according to an 1896 newspaper article. Now, she was in fact with a boy named Guy Barry who lived in a neighboring farmhouse. They saw each other every day, but her parents told her to stay away from him. Now she, didn't, now she didn't like that and got angry at them, so she mixed rat poison in their porridge. Her father and brother died, but her mother survived. She was found not guilty by reason of insanity and went to live with her mother. Seeley then poisoned her again, and this time it worked. At age 23, Seeley stood trial, truly alone, but was found not guilty by reason of insanity and sent to a 
State Hospital. She lived out the rest of her life at an insane asylum, and since then the house has been haunted. One visitor saw a woman dressed like Celie Rose outside the house. People have seen lights flicker, felt a phantom cat, disembodied voices are heard, and there's an overall eerie feeling on the property. And coming in at number one is the Franklin Castle. The Franklin Castle is arguably the most haunted house in Ohio due to the Tidemans family's tragic past. Hans Tidemann, a German immigrant and co-founder of Union Banking and Savings Co., built the home in 1881. His first wife, Louisa, died inside Franklin Castle in the 1890s, and he would eventually bury three more of his children and his mother. Since then, the location has been the site of mysterious hauntings. A family with six children called the Romanos had moved into the house, and on the day they moved in, two of their children said they'd encouraged a crying girl while on the third floor. Now They kept having a bunch of paranormal experiences, and a priest advised the Romanos to move out, and in 1974, they did. But the hauntings didn't stop when the Romanos left. From there, the house was sold again and again and again. Each new occupant reported strange occurrences like passing through odd vapors, hearing a child crying, or seeing a woman in black standing in the window. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 disturbing historical facts from Ohio that you were never taught in school. Did you know about any of these facts? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm your host, Emily, and we'll see you next time. Peace.